The story of the life of Jesus is a thoroughly Jewish story. If you really want to believe it, you don't have to be Jewish. But a Jewish understanding of the issues is really quite beneficial. The truth is that all of the friends and followers of Jesus were Jewish. We call them the disciples, but he would have called them his Talmudim. They were his students. He was their teacher. That is why he was called rabbi. Jesus followed the Jewish paradigm and his rabbinic style of teaching. And his reference sources came from the Jewish literature. Remember, friend, the New Testament church didn't have a New Testament. They read the Tanakh, the Jewish Bible. They studied the Jewish apocryphal writings and the Jewish pseudepigraphical literature. If you followed this program, Crosstalk, you probably already know this stuff. But if this stuff surprises you, it simply means that you're somewhat unfamiliar with the Jewish origins of the Christian faith. Of course, I hope to remedy this lack. Jews and non-Jews should understand that the early church was thoroughly Jewish. There were simply no non-Jews in the club when Christianity emerged in early first century Judea. That is why it is not intellectually honest for Jewish people to believe that you can't be Jewish and believe in Jesus. History proves otherwise. Jewish Christianity was the norm in antiquity, and it is equally errant for non-Jewish Christians to ignore their own Jewish heritage. To deny the Jewishness of the gospel is to ignore the literature itself. I mean, think about it. The New Testament account took place in a Jewish land, among Jewish people, in Jewish synagogues, dealing with Jewish laws, Jewish customs, and Jewish literature. The story of his life was written by Jewish men called apostles. The Bible consists of 66 books. 64 of them were written by Jews, predominantly to Jews, for Jews. Oh, I'll give you, there was one Gentile in the list of authors. Okay, he wasn't Jewish, but he was a doctor. His name was Luke, and he wrote two of the 66 books of the Bible to tell the Jewish story of a Jewish savior to a non-Jewish world so that the light of Israel could become the light of the nations. As a result of his work and the work of his Jewish peers, the Jewish believers of the first century began the process of revealing the God of Israel to the Gentile world. And as the conditions of our culture continue deteriorating into moral lawlessness, it's happening. I want to announce the love of God and the coming of our Messiah. A hopeless world needs hope. A discouraged population needs encouragement. And that is why this outreach exists. 